Much has been written about the connection between evolution, social Darwinism, and the Holocaust. But there was a Holocaust before the Holocaust, today on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. I'm Richard Fangrad. And I'm Calvin Smith. Now today on, today on uh, uh, this week on the program, we're going to talk about uh, evolution and the Holocaust before the Holocaust. Yeah, and just a bit of a warning here or caveat or something. This, this is a very serious and very heavy subject, often gruesome subject that we're going to be discussing here today. And uh, what we're going to be demonstrating is a very clear relationship between social Darwinism which itself is a philosophical uh, offshoot of the, of the concept of Darwinian evolution, right. and the Nazi and other holocausts. You know, I can remember being a kid, uh, I guess an early teen or something, and learning about the Nazi holocaust. And it, it was just kind of overwhelming in my mind. I was kind of thinking, sure. yeah. how yeah. on earth could these people have done that to other people? Like it's just my, it's not like, it wasn't just like the war, it was like, the, you know, the, the, the extermination and the camps and stuff. And I always thought, wow, were, were, were Nazis some kind of like different people? Did they have some kind of screw loose or were they just, like yeah, what, yeah. Could, what could do that? You know, of course I, was, I wasn't a Christian, uh, hadn't read the scripture, did have no concept of the sinful nature of man. Um, it's kind of a naive understanding, I guess. Uh, you know, when you look at the historical and philosophical underpinnings of the subject, then it's, it's easier to understand, but I, I just remember it being, you know, such a strange thing that that could happen. You know? Yeah, right, and, and what we're going to look at today is uh, the connection between evolution and what you believe about origins and how that affects people in different ways. Right. Uh, we're going to clearly show that the German society was prepared long before the Holocaust in, in Nazi Germany. Yeah. Uh, to to accept racist ideas as scientific, right. as as valid scientifically, and therefore that the final solution was intellectually justified. Right. Now, immediately when you get into this discussion, of course, there are going to be many people who are going to object and say, "Look, you can't blame evolution on the Holocaust. You know, you can't blame belief in evolution on bad things. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, look at the Crusades or or the Inquisition or the Salem witch trials. You know, there were Christians who did that, and right. they're going to yeah. come back like this, but." You know, without getting into arguments as to whether the Crusades were justified or, or whether some of the people that, you know, committed whatever were really Christians or whatever. Yeah. Let's just get something straight. Any Christian, someone who says they're, they're a follower of Christ, who, who commits murder, et cetera, or, or does anything against what Jesus teaches, is being inconsistent with what they claim to be. Right. So to be a follower of Jesus and then to go against what he taught is, is hypocritical, right? Um, yeah. However, if you're an atheistic <laughs> evolutionist, then there can be no absolute moral standard that you can point to as the basis for why you would decide, for example, that murder is wrong. Right. Now, many atheists are, are, are wonderful people. Yeah. It's not that atheists cannot be good people, it's that they don't have a standard that they can say, this is my standard for why I'm good. Right. That's the issue. Yeah. And if, if life has been a struggle from pond scum for, for millions of years, uh, th then um, uh, Death and suffering is actually an important part of what got us here originally. E e extinction of weaker species is a must right. in that scenario. Yep. Um, the best you can say as an atheist regarding morality is your own personal opinion. It's my opinion that murder is wrong and right. that we should take care of nice people and so on. Uh, uh, but then if everybody has their own opinion, <laughs> what do you do when opinions conflict and so on? Where's right. the absolute standard? Yeah. It all breaks down at that point. I remember talking one time to an atheist and I said, look, What's the, what's the more correct answer? Two plus two equals five, or two plus two equals 5,000? Okay. And he said, well, five. I said, why? He said, well, it's because it's closer to four. I said, that's right. There is an absolute answer, four, and so you know that five is closest to it. But if there's no absolute answer, then why would 5,000 or five million or whatever not be the, the you know? Right. It doesn't matter. There is no, yeah. There's no way yeah. to, to, to determine it. So worldviews should be judged on their consistent application, not the inconsistent anomalies that may show up uh, from someone, you know, 
show and professing this or that or yeah. you know my, my oldest daughter she likes to say you know I can walk into a garage and say vroom vroom but that doesn't make me a car <laughs> and not everyone who calls himself a Christian is, is a Christian etc but the point is, is that the people conduct themselves according to what Jesus taught um, you know versus what people conduct themselves consistently belief in evolution pawns come to people over billions of years death and suffering being an important part of that what, what would the results be? Yeah, right. yeah. Well, let's let's get into this. Uh, uh, many people tend to think that the Nazi Germany, Nazi Germany, is this sudden atrocious anomaly that pops up on the world social radar from 1939 to 1945, right. and then goes away. But most don't realize the history behind the movement that led up to that. And let's face it, the Nazis, although a smaller group uh, than the German populace as a whole, could not have accomplished what they did alone. Millions of people. Um, contributed in one way or another to what accumulated in those concentration camps. And we'll have more on that in 60 seconds. At a forum on depression, a young man said, I think some people may have an inability to cope. And maybe this might sound a bit extreme, but that might be Darwinian theory. The Darwin theory of survival of the fittest. Maybe some of us aren't meant to survive. Maybe some of us are meant to kill ourselves. Now, why did this young man think that human life has such little value? Perhaps he'd heard people like Oxford professor Peter Atkins, who said, we are just a bit of slime on the planet. Likewise, psychologist Susan Blackmore said, if you really think about evolution and why we human beings are here, you have to come to the conclusion that we're here for absolutely no reason at all. What a stark contrast to the words of Jesus, who said, I have come that they may have life, and have it to the full. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. If you just tuned in, uh, today we're talking about evolution and the Holocaust and, um, you know, how did a civilized nation like Germany become so incredibly barbaric? Well, many people don't realize that there was actually a Holocaust in Africa before the Nazi Holocaust as we know it. Right. Uh, the first German missionaries began working in southern Africa in the late 1820s and experienced uh, significant success uh, in evangelizing and educating the, the, the people they met. But towards the end of the 19th century, Germans, many indoctrinated in social Darwinism, um, colonized southwest Africa, what uh, is known as Namib Namibia today, uh, in the 1880s. They generally re regarded the Herero people there uh, as primitive and frequently re referred to them as subhuman and baboons. According to one missionary living at the time, the real cause of the bitterness be among the Hereros towards the Germans is without question the fact that the average German looks down upon the natives as being upon the same level as the higher primates, baboon being their favorite term for the natives, and treats them like animals. The settler holds that the native has a right to exist only in so insofar as he is useful to the white man. It follows that the whites value their horses and even their oxen more than they value the natives. Amazing. So what changed in those 40 years? Right. Um, we, why would the average German who came from a culture based on Christianity, right. uh, sending missionaries, etc., uh, in which the Bible says that all men are descended from, from Adam and Eve and, and created equal, uh, equal in God's sight, suddenly have the idea that, that black people are equal to or less than animals? Right. What happened? Well, that's simple. Darwin. Right? Mm. His book came out in 1859, right in between there, and it was hugely popular in Germany. Yeah. And in, in particular, atheists like Ernst Haeckel, uh, they called him Darwin's Doberman. Uh, Huxley was his bulldog, <laughs> bulldog he, this was Doberman. his Doberman. Yeah. Uh, he vigorously promoted anti-Christian ideas as science, and here's some quotes directly from him. Uh, all these five, he was speaking of an earlier class classification than Haeckel's own, all these five races of men, according to the Jewish legend of creation, are said to have descended from a single pair, Adam and Eve, and in accordance with this are said to be varieties of one kind or species. The excellent paleontologist Quenstelt is right in maintaining that if Negroes and Caucasians were snails, zoologists would universally agree that they represented two very distinct species, which could never have originated from one pair by gradual divergence. There can be no doubt that the innumerable races and varieties of our domestic dogs differ in a much greater degree from one another than the different genera and species distinguished by the zoologist in the systematic arrangement of the dog tribe, and that they are generally regarded only as varieties of a single species, Canis familiaris. In the same way, most anthropologists dogmatically and firmly hold to the so-called unity of species for all the races of men, 
and unite them into one species as Homo sapiens. However, the unprejudiced and critical inquirer, when ho carefully comparing them, cannot rid himself of the conviction that the morphological differences between them are much more important than those by which, for instance, the various species of bears, wolves, or cats are distinguished in the zoological system. That's incredible. So what he's saying is <coughs> variations in the dog kind, they're all still dogs, but variations in humans, some of them aren't really humans. Right. It's right. incredible. Yep. Um, the, the full title of Charles Darwin's book, his famous book, is On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection or the Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. Right. And Darwin supporters have said that, well, his, his use of the word races there isn't really referring to people and it's uh, using to describe subspecies of animals and so on. Uh, to a certain degree, that's correct. Uh, but what Darwin did mean by this and what, what Darwin thought of no, the non-white races yep. uh, is we, we can look at his other writings. Like the, in The Descent of Man, he said this. At some future period, not very distant as measured by centuries, the civilized races of man will almost certainly exterminate and replace the savage races throughout the world. At the same time, the anthropomorphous apes, that is, the apes which allegedly look like people, will no doubt be exterminated. Right. Wow, amazing. So Darwin believed that the various races were at different evolutionary levels. Right, right? yeah. With blacks lower and, and the white, the Caucasians were at the top. And therefore, uh, the whole idea is some people are more human, some people are less human. Yes. And, uh, yes, and you, can, you can see his writing there, the anthropomorphous apes, the ones that look like people, right? The apes yeah. that look like people. So um, we can see how that was seeded into this culture, accepted uh, uncritically, and how it was diametrically opposed, like Heckel said, to Adam and Eve and the concept that God had created everyone in his image. Right. And we'll look into more when we get back. For a more in-depth understanding of topics relating to the creation evolution debate, the Journal of Creation contains peer-reviewed research papers that support the biblical account of creation, the flood, and the fall. One subscriber said, I always assumed that this journal would be too academic for me. Not so. I am a Christian with a very inquiring mind. With each issue, I find powerful articles that open doors and shine light on my understanding of the world. Each journal of creation is more than 120 pages and published three times a year. To subscribe, visit creation.com. If you just tuned in, we're talking about the Holocaust before the Holocaust. Um, now as, as we saw that evolutionary teaching had prepared the German people for, uh, by the late 1800s, had prepared them into believing that uh, black people, darker skinned people, were subhuman. And this led to some incredible brutality. It did. Uh, this became common belief amongst uh, adopters of Darwinism. Uh, Thomas Huxley, an ardent defender of Darwin who garnered the, the, the name Darwin's Bulldog, wrote that no rational man, cognizant of the facts, believes that the average Negro, Negro is the equal still less the superior of the white man. Huxley described whites as bigger brained and smaller jawed. And against Ernst Haeckel, as we heard from in the last segment, uh, reiterated this belief when he said in his book, The History of Creation, thus for example, a great English traveler who lived for a considerable time on the west coast of Africa says, I consider the Negro to be a lower species of man and cannot make up my mind to look upon him as a man and a brother, for the gorilla would then also have to be admitted into the family. Yeah, amazing. Absolutely and, brutal. And these teachings were commonplace throughout Germany. People generally understood these things and, uh, and accepted them. And we'll, let's, let's look at the consequences now before the Holocaust, what happened in Africa. Yeah. Uh, what we're talking about here uh, today is well documented. Uh, there are several books and websites dedicated to the Herero genocide, which anybody can look up. Um, basically, Germans colonized Southwest Africa and Namibia today in the 1880s. Many Germans per uh, perpetrated inhumane acts towards the Herero. They seized their land and cattle, shot people for no reason at all. They sexually abused and raped the women. And because of the interest in evolutionary theory uh, and missing links, they dug up the graves uh, of the Herrera's ancestors, stole their st skulls for, for scientific study, yeah. which, which really means they, they were using them to promote their racist uh, evolutionary beliefs. And not surprisingly, of course, the, the Herrera tried to fight back. Um, although Herrera Christians tried to make peace, there were many Christians, uh, of course, uh, at that time. Um, one native said, all our obedience and patience with the Germans is of little avail, for each day they shoot someone dead for no reason at all. 
and many mm. historians, if you read uh, people who've actually documented these accounts, um, actually feel that the settlers actually provoked the Herreros mm. doing these types yeah. of things uh, to give an excuse uh, to, to, to solve the problem uh, of clearing land uh, basically for German settlers. Yeah, in, in 1904, uh, the Germans sent uh, General Lothar van Trotha to deal with the problem uh, as they saw it. His writings reveal his mindset and his motivations. He said, I destroy the African tribes with streams of blood and streams of money. Only following this cleansing can something new emerge which will remain. At the outset, we cannot do without the natives, i.e. The, the hard labor, but they finally have to melt away where the climate allows the white man to work. Philanthropic views cannot banish Darwin's law, survival of the fittest. Right. It's amazing. Von Trotha and his troops, they didn't spare the native women or the children. Yeah. Uh, German colonial rule uh, succeeded in annihilating 75% of the Herero. Uh, before the war, um, there were 80,000 uh, Herero. Uh, after the war, there were only 20,000 remained. And the Nama people, uh, a southern tribe that entered into the war almost a year later due to similar circumstances, uh, you know, the colonizers coming in, uh, were also reduced by 50%. So we can see here a direct link between a mindset, okay, they're not created in God's image, they're just evolved animals, we're more evolved than those animals, yeah. Yeah. we want their stuff, we want their space, we want their, 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 their land, we can do whatever we want to them, because they're not human. They're not human. They're more, we're more evolved than them, and so we're just going to impose our will. It's the survival of the fittest mentality um, applied, and you can see in Von Trotha's own words, uh, Darwin's law, survival of the fittest, yeah. became their, their over, overarching mindset. And we'll uh, continue when we get back. Everyone likes to get things for free. Thanks to donors at Creation Ministries International, we have put great effort into making huge amounts of faith-building information freely available online. Creation.com now has more than 8,000 articles. Some of CMI's most popular books are in PDF format to read online for free. All 48 episodes of Creation Magazine Live and other teaching videos are online at no charge. Consider making a donation, enabling us to continue producing free faith-building information. Our subject today is the Holocaust before the Holocaust, how evolution theory, evolutionary ideas had uh, uh, perpetuated into the German culture in Af and affected the Herero people in Africa long before the Holocaust in uh, the Second World War. Right. So we saw that 75% uh, um, of the Herero people were, were wiped out. But the remaining Herero, as well as the Nama, were sent to concentration camps uh, and died due to abuse and hard labor. Some were experimented upon, just like in Nazi Germany, and body parts of these dead prisoners were used in racial studies, trying to prove the inferiority of blacks. You know, they've got less intelligence, et cetera. Right. Yeah. And uh, hard to even describe this here, but before the skulls were sent off and sold to German universities, the female prisoners uh, did all the horrendous preparatory work. In the book, The Angel of Death Has Descended Violently uh, Among Them, it's described this way. In Swakopmund, female prisoners were forced to boil the severed heads of concentration camp inmates and then scrape them to the bone with shards of glass. The result of their horrific labor is seen in this German postcard uh, from GSWA. One shudders to think of the emotional impact it would have had on these women who were forced to scrape severed heads clean of flesh to remove brains, scalp and eyes that could easily have belonged to family uh, friends or family members. This obviously had long-term implications. It led directly to uh, the concentration camps in the Nazi Holocaust That's years right. later. Uh, other racial studies performed in Namibia influenced racial policy in Germany for decades to come. That's right. Uh, Eugen Fischer, a geneticist, an avid eugenist, uh, he was sent to Namib Namibia for uh, one main purpose, to evaluate the physical characteristics and intelligence of several hundred interracial children 
and prove that interracial relations uh, would be detrimental to European culture. It was Fisher's work that led to the victimization and sterilization of blacks and other groups in the Third Reich. Right. So th again, starting in Africa. Yeah. yeah. So in, in effect, the Herero massacre was like a, like a test run right. for the yeah. Holocaust in Germany. And, and, and this was all undergirded by the belief they, they were just animals and could be treated as such. And of course, this was all undergirded by belief in evolution. Sure. Yeah. It, it's a direct correlation when you look into these things, which isn't a very fun thing to do. Um, but what happened to those people were the same things that happened to the Jewish uh, people in the, in the Nazi uh, Germany. Now, you think about it. Social commentators are, are puzzled and how on earth a civilized nation like Germany, you know, they, they have citizens who, who brutally kill hundreds of people per day. They go home, they listen to classical music, they have a nice dinner right. with their family yep. and friends, uh, they entertain guests. Well, isn't that what someone that works at a butcher shop would do? You go to work, you kill the animals, you come back home, everything's yeah. tickety-boo. Yeah. Um, your conscience won't, didn't bother you because you didn't really think that they were human, right? That, that's basically, yeah. and, and that's what they were conditioned to think. So um, a look at some of the uh, uh, propaganda uh, posters here from, from Germany. In this German eugenics propaganda poster, uh, Germans are being told that they must take the burden for degenerates and those who are not as genetically fit. Uh, you know, then, then we see this one. Only good seed should be sown. Well, who gets to decide who, what seed is good and what's, what's well, not? Well, that's the right? question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So taking these uh, attitudes into account, it, it's, it's just not surprising that the Holocaust occurred. Yeah. In, in a German propaganda film uh, called Victims of the Past, you, and you can see this on YouTube, just look it up there. It says, all weak living things will inevitably perish in nature. In the last few decades, mankind has sinned frightfully against the law of natural selection. We haven't just maintained life unworthy of life, we have even allowed it to multiply. Right. Wow. Yeah, it, it's, it's stunning to see the mindset of, of the people that put this stuff out. So, so again, we, we've got this smoking gun proof that Nazis base their beliefs on evolution, right? Yes. The law of natural selection. I mean, think about this. 100 years prior to this film being made, the, the, the term natural selection didn't even exist. Yeah, yeah. And, and so now by this point in their history, it's now deemed a law. Um, people are taking this as science. It's become uh, more authoritative than God's word in their minds. And of course, they're just putting it to, uh, to use, so to speak. Um, we have a DVD uh, uh, made by uh, Dr. Jonathan Sarfati, one of our staff members, who's uh, done a lot of study on the correlation between um, evolution and the Holocaust. Yeah. And, uh, and he actually shows that clip from that, that movie in there, uh, talking about you know, sinning against the law of, of, of uh, natural selection, and, and much more detailed with showing direct links to Nazi Germany and, uh, and uh, belief in, in evolution. And so if you want to uh, check this DVD out, you can go to our website, go to the web store, and, uh, and look it up, Evolution and the Holocaust. And on, the, on your, your checkout, you're going to be able to uh, punch in a code, uh, CML, E H, and you'd be able to get this DVD for 50% off of what uh, it would normally be, be selling at. And this is a real, real eye-opener to p many people who think that, you know, well, Darwinian evolution, it doesn't have any effect on society. Yeah, it's well, just it a does. scientific theory. Yep. So we'll be back. Refuting evolution is a powerful, concise summary that explains where the common evidences used to promote evolution in textbooks are wrong, while at the same time showing how creation is better supported by scientific observations. It will stimulate much discussion and help students and teachers think more critically about the creation-evolution debate, particularly the often overlooked differences between operational and historical science and how they relate to the topic of origins. Order your copy today at creation.com. Our subject today was the Holocaust before the Holocaust and then what we saw was the way that the African and Jewish Holocaust was justified in the minds of those who perpetrated these acts uh, because what they did is actually downgraded the status of their victims from uh, humans, uh, you know, to either non-human status or, or, or to subhuman, they weren't quite right. on the same level. Yeah. And this um, uh, inferior status, of course, it, 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 that's why, how they justified it in, in the eyes of their killers. Now, let's look at a quote from an article from our website, creation.com slash tale-2-fish, a tale of two fish, where a modern abortionist 
admits some chilling details about her belief about human life. Um, so abortionist said, what if an abortion ends a life? A fetus can be a human life without having the same rights as the woman in whose body it resides. She's the boss. Her life and what is right for her circumstances and her health should automatically trump the rights of the non-autonomous entity inside of her, always. I believe that life starts at conception. I never wavered for a moment in the belief that I was carrying a human life inside of me. It, I believe that that's what a fetus is, a human life. And that doesn't make me one iota less solidly pro-choice. All life is not equal. If by some random fluke I learned today that I was pregnant, you bet your blank I'd have an abortion. I'd have the world's greatest abortion. I would put the life of a mother over the life of a fetus every single time, even if I still need to acknowledge my conviction that the fetus is a life, a life worth sacrificing. Amazing. Does that sound familiar? Kind of matches what we've, what we've been saying, what was taught to the German people and led to the Nazi Holocaust. Um, she's just doing what school children are taught in most Western schools, in, in, in Western nations, uh, that, that, that humans, that life begins at birth and so on, that kind of thing. Some may say this is just one person's opinion and doesn't reflect society in general, but actually, actually it does. Uh, uh, Mary has the law on her side in most Western societies. Right. Most West, the law supports her law. position. That's right. right? Uh, there is a Holocaust going on all around us, a silent Holocaust that's happening right now, and yeah. it's sanctioned by the laws of the land all over the world. Yeah. Uh, in 2004, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, ABC, screened nationally a three-part series entitled Testing God on the 7th, 14th, and 21st of March. Originally produced in the UK, the anti-God thrust of the, the, uh, the title uh, episode, Killing the Creator, accurately reflects the, the content of the series. Yep. Uh, and here's some quotes from it. But why have we turned out the way we are? Once we believed we were unique, blessed with a soul and lovingly created by God in his image and likeness. Today, evolution says we are just a product of natural selection, the descendants of a primitive bacteria, not the children of God. The theory which has laid claim to God's job as our creator is Darwin's blind and meaningless mechanism of evolution. Right. You know, just like myself, when I was learning about the Nazi Holocaust and just flabbergasted as people you know, their morality just seemed to be so far removed from everyone else's. Yeah. You know, parents shouldn't be surprised today when we see the next generation um, increasingly different in their, their moral and value systems. I mean, I've talked to parents and they're just like, what did I do wrong? You know, what's mm. going on yeah. with my kids and things like that? Well, the fact is there's this God is dead message that's being taught as science and fact right. in most yeah. Western world countries. Um, and, uh, and this is leading to, to some terrible, terrible uh, consequences. Yeah. You can get a free copy of Creation Magazine and, uh, and articles like this and many other faith-building articles are there in the magazine. Go to creation.com slash freemag and get a free magazine. We'll see you next week.